Okay. Um, I don't want you all to think that I'm here and I'm going to write a story that's going to predict everything about social media because I don't think I could ever do that. Um, but uh, I am here because of something that I run on my blog, which is a short story club. And the idea is that people send in ideas for short stories. I pick a winner and every month write a short story for the members of the club. And when I told Michael about this, he said, oh, we could mix that with social media and that would be really cool. And I went, oh, back and here I am. So this is all about writing the social media future. And this comes under the broad genre umbrella of speculative fiction. Now, I could bore you all senseless with the arguments about genres and which genres fit into which, and nobody cares apart from booksellers and authors, not the readers. So we're not going to worry about that. The only definition I want to introduce to you all right now is that speculative fiction is all about playing with possible futures in the context of this talk, and that's what we're going to be looking at. And the two possible types of speculative fiction that I want to focus on are the utopian future and the dystopian future. And the utopian future is all about the idea that humanity will have a better future as a result of having solved problems that we have today, usually with the use of technology. And so I thought, oh, I need a picture. And I couldn't think of a utopian novel. I Maybe I'm just miserable and I only read dystopian <laughs> fiction. I don't know what it is, but the thing that did spring to mind was Star Trek. Of course, next generation. And so the other type of um, fiction that I want to focus on is the dystopian future. And this is what my main passion is and what I love, in particular post-apocalyptic. But dystopian in general is the idea that things will get worse. And that generally technology, and perhaps in this context social media technology, will actually be used to control society, control people, um, will make the world a worse place to live in. And of course, the main example there is 1984. This is the film adaptation, a snapshot from that. And 1984 was written an awfully, awfully long time ago and is actually frighteningly accurate. I actually gave it to my next door neighbour who's a teenager and she gave it back to me and said, I can't read it, it's too scary. I was like, no, no, you must read it. This is exactly why you must read it. So that's the dystopian future. Obviously, in science fiction and speculative fiction, we often get it wrong. I don't know how many of you woke up at the beginning of 2010 and said, well, where's my silver jumpsuit? Where's my flying car? I want my personal rocket pack. I feel personally very disappointed. So it does go wrong sometimes. And the hoverboard as well. I don't know if I'll ever get over the disappointment of not having that by 2015, because it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Sometimes it does predict some things that come to pass. Um, I'm revealing my trekky, dissolute youth here. I don't know who else was excited when the iPad came out to go, oh, we'll all be walking around like on Star Trek with the, the pads. Sometimes they do predict things. And I put the picture of the satellite as a homage to um, Arthur C. Clarke, who predicted geostationary satellites being used for global communications in 1945 in a wireless communications magazine. So, Good on him. And of course, Big Brother from 1984. The dystopian future is here, either on Channel 4 for your watching pleasure, or on the street for your CCTV pleasure. But what really matters about all of this isn't whether we've predicted iPads, whether we need to have personal rocket packs. What's really important about different types of speculative fiction, in my humble opinion, is what it reveals about us. What does the different type of divisions in speculative fiction reveal about human psychology? This is the intersection between fiction and the human mind and how we kind of play with investigating it. I think utopian fiction reveals what we all hope for. And thinking about Star Trek, that's a very, very good example. By the 24th century in that universe, we've solved really boring things like energy and having enough of it and producing food and money, that's all been solved. So human beings can now turn their attention to art and science and the exploration of the galaxy and all of those lovely, happy, fluffy things. So technology is, is revealing our hope through utopian fiction that we will figure it all out in the end. And of course dystopian fiction reveals our fears. What are we scared of?
a loss of privacy. And this is something that comes up a lot, especially in terms of social media, so I'm hoping we might play with some of those themes. A loss of personal control, and privacy and personal control are very much core themes in 1984, to return to that. The loss of culture, book burning in Fahrenheit 451, for example. The loss of intelligence and loss of humanity are both fears that I think H.G. Wells expresses in The Time Machine. Now, when people think about the time machine, generally they think about the time machine bit. Ooh, that would be really cool, having a machine you could go up and down the future. But what is actually at the core of that book is looking at human beings in the far future and how they've degenerated into horrible, underground, scary monsters and completely beautiful and airheaded, useless beings on the surface world. And I could bore you about that for ages, but I won't. But this is to, to show that dystopian fiction reveals what we are scared of. So why am I doing this? It's because I would like us to brainstorm lots of ideas in the discussion group. And these ideas hopefully would be about social media themes. I'll pick something that I think is really exciting, write a story from it, and then you will get to read it and then discuss it. So if you are interested in these themes and want to see how we can play with investigating them with the use of short stories, that's the discussion to go to. Okay, where there's a what if, there's a story. So some what ifs to think about, I'm running out of time. Every, everybody was expected to blog about everything. There was no such thing as privacy, and everybody had to register through the government to gain access to the internet. That's scary. So let's create something together. I'd like to write a story with all your prompts. So that's the end, yay! Thank you.